So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. 10 reasons the Galaxy S24 Ultra has been the better phone than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I have a couple more bonus reasons as well at the end. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, when I compared why the iPhone was better, it was a little harder to find reasons why, because, you know, when I'm making these videos, we're coming from more of a hardware perspective. There are some software enhancements and things that um, can be subjective, but when you look at specs for spec, it's really hard to say the 15 Pro Max beats the S24 Ultra. So we're gonna talk about the first reason. The S24 Ultra is taking down the iPhone for me over my experience using both of these, and that is the display. So if you take a look at the display, not only is it a larger panel, let's take a look here. It's a larger panel here. Its flat design makes way for the S Pen to be a very practical usage these days. And also, it takes a really good advantage of this panel. Um, going into settings here, though, here's what I really like over the iPhone, the ability to tweak the vivid mode. Now, we just got this in a recent update. It didn't launch like this, but now it does. And you can change RGB values, but it can get much more vivid with that vivid slider cranked all the way up. So more customization, more usage there with the display. In addition, they have a lot of features here, including the ability to tweak your own resolution. So that's quite nice as well, and I really like the edge panels and how it takes advantage of the panels. So definitely I feel like I'm getting a better display experience. And not only that, not to mention, the anti-glare recoding on here is very good on this phone, and it makes it look tech sharp and really has no glare, so it's one of the best displays I've ever seen on a smartphone. Some people don't really like its color tones this year, but personally, I've been loving this panel. So the next reason the S24 Ultra beats the 15 Pro Max is the AI features. Now this might change just here in a little bit at iOS 18, but I think that's gonna go more towards the 16 phones, and iOS 18 is not gonna be fresh out of the gate ready to go. There's gonna be beta editions, and you probably won't be getting any serious AI features officially to your phone until the fall. So Samsung's definitely in the lead here. You got real-time translations and phone calls. The Samsung keyboard has some AI stuff and interpreter. The one I use the most is this browsing assist feature in Safari, or Safari, did I, did I really just call it Samsung Internet Safari? Yes, I did. I'm thinking about both phones right here, but I summarize here um, within the Samsung, and it basically quickly allows you to get a summary of articles, so you don't have to read the entire article. Pretty neat feature. In addition, you do have different photo editor features, Samsung Notes, and honestly, some of these AI features are not gimmicky. Like this wallpaper right here is a generative AI wallpaper. You can go into generative AI, you can hit the creative, and the AI can figure out you know, some different types of wallpapers, kind of giving you some really neat looks to your phone. Um, but once again, you got the circle search as well. So if we go over here, and you kind of just want to circle search anything. Let's say you want to circle search this game right here. It'll talk about this game. Very neat. That's a very neat new feature. And I think while it's a fresh new feature, and so in the future, you might see everybody just circle searching whatever they need to check on their device. So we'll see how it goes in the future. So the third reason is the camera. Now, the cameras are very competitive on these two phones, but the where, the where this phone really shines is the... The zoom. So the zoom on here is so much sharper on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's pretty noticeable. But in addition, I do like the selfie camera. But overall, I, I really like how many modes we have here. Now, I drug a few out of here. They're kind of down here. But you have dual recording mode. You have pro video where you can tweak everything in a professional format and pro camera. Now you do have third party options on the iPhone that could mimic some of these features, but you gotta download separate apps. It's built natively into the Samsung UI here. So very nice. I think overall the phone just gives you a level of you know versatility you don't find on the iPhone. You do have the ability to go 8K as well, although I do think the video quality looks better. On the iPhone, you have super steady. This is just a total versatile beast. If you wanted to kind of do everything on one phone, like every camera needs you would ever have, this is the phone I'm taking. And number four is the S Pen. Now, the S Pen is something that everyone uses, but at the same time, if you do want to use it, you know, it really is a useful tool, but you got to remember to use it um, 
Once you do though, you might not want to go back. Also, if you download the GoodLock application, let's go over here. They do have specific S Pen enhancements you can do. It's called Pentastic. You can change things out quite a bit and customize, kind of like how the cursor looks and all that stuff. You can have a heart if you're into that. You can have um, all these different things. You can make custom ones. You can have different sounds, different shortcuts. So there's even customization on top of, you know, the S Pen features that Samsung throws in. So if we go over here and go to S Pen, let's go here, advanced features. You'll see we have plenty of features thrown in here, but on top of that, add the good lock and the S Pen becomes great. Also on the lock screen, you can write down notes here. They introduced this feature a long time ago. So let's say get some milk, let's say get bread, and how about get eggs? Now you can pin this to the lock screen, really cool. So we can go ahead and pin that. And then it'll just stay there. So you can kind of see and not forget what you have to do for the day. So this is just an incredible, useful tool. And then sometimes if like you're browsing something, for example, and things are just a little too small, you don't want to use your finger or your fingers are dirty or something, don't want to get the screen messed up. The S Pen can be a nice little tool to kind of highlight over things and click on things. So pretty neat and jotting down notes. It's a lot of usage. And if you want to get serious about art, you can go ahead and go on the pen up community and start drawing and coloring and the list goes on. The S Pen is a pretty incredible tool if you take advantage of it. Now, while the software on the iPhone is very smooth, minimal, and just works day to day, I really do appreciate how smooth and minimal it is. And that's why a SIM is in both of these phones. Um, you can't get over the fact, I can't get over the fact of how fun the Galaxy is to use. It's kind of like polished, but also fun. You have the Galaxy Store, which I can go deep into, have some good times. You have the Play Store, which is on pretty much all Android phones. Then on top of that, you have the built-in theming within the Galaxy themes. So you can go have some fun with that. You could change your icons. You could change, again, we, we could change wallpapers on any phone, but there's a ton built right in here into this uh, menu system right here. If you just go ahead and go here, go to Galaxy themes, it's all built in right here. So you don't got to really go looking for it too much. And then of course, Samsung loads up the advanced features within here. So let's go over here to where are they at? It says advanced feature somewhere right there. So we have, you know, all these features within labs. We have tons of motions and gestures, navigation changes. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. This is just a fun phone to use. You can post widgets on the home screen of your S pen notes and stuff. So, I mean, it, it, it literally, it, it's like never ending fun. <laughs> if you want to have fun on the phone, it's kind of never ending here on the flip side. If you do want to have you know, a minimal experience where you're not really distracted with your phone, which is a very basic, regular day-to-day -day premium device, then the iPhone is probably better for you. But for productivity, having fun, and also being polished with several updates as well, and if you want to make it simple, you don't have to use all those features. The Samsung is really a really sweet phone to have. The battery on the Samsung, I do find it to be not quite as good in certain situations, but better in others. Like if I'm heavy using it, I feel like the iPhone drains a little faster, but overall I find the iPhone lasted just a hair longer, but this does have a bigger battery on the Samsung and this phone is a 5,000 milliamp and it's better than ever. This phone actually is so much better than Samsung's of the past, really never lets me down. If you turn on the low power, power saving mode. Look at that. Look at that jump right there. You get like an extra five hours right there just by turning that on. So this phone right here has incredible battery and I think it should hold its capacity longer, which will make it a better option than the iPhone just because it has a larger cell. It should hold that capacity a little bit longer. The reason I found this to be better is it charges much faster than the 15 Pro Max. In addition, you can reverse wireless charge. So I actually share some titanium charge over here to this titanium phone over here quite nice. The phone also has a really nice titanium build. While Apple did launch that first, it still looks very premium and nice here and feels great on the Samsung as well in their own kind of way, whereas this one feels more curvy and smooth. This one feels sharper and more rectangular. So while this does have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, it does have, it's booster for Galaxy, it does have the 12 gigabytes of RAM. So four more gigs than the iPhone. And while the iPhone doesn't really reload anything you've seen in my speed tests, this phone really takes advantage of its multitasking. So if you want to like have pop view windows and stuff all over the place, 
Let's go ahead and bring them down. And then you're doing something over here. And then you need to bring this back up. And then maybe you need to pop in another application. Let's go ahead and pop in the calculator really quick. We'll go ahead and grab settings because we were doing something there. And then we'll go ahead and check the Geekbench one more time. You can have literally all these apps open at once. Not everybody will do this all the time, but then you can bring them down here and kind of cycle through them. The multitasking is insane on here and it never lags really no matter what you're doing. So this is really quite neat here. So we split two apps over here and we have four going on right here. So if I go over here and now when would you ever have to use this? Well, I could think of like times when, let's say you don't have your laptop with you or something or your tablet and you need to do pretty much everything on your phone. Um, you might be able to do this. Also, you can lower the DPI within developer options to make your screen like a little bit scaled down, even though it will look really tiny. And then you could go ahead and have more room to multitask on here. But yeah, just they just add so much in that area and it just it does it all blazing fast. Um, that's just so neat. And I really think that this is a much more productive phone, taking a lot more advantage of its RAM. The next one is the SIM card tray. Thank you, Samsung. Thank you. Pretty much all Android manufacturers are leaving the SIM card. Don't go eSIM. That is super lame. Give us the option. We like options. And going eSIM has made it very difficult to switch between iPhone and Android. And literally, it got so annoying that I simply just got a different, you know, cheap phone carrier for this one right here, um, the Samsung. So definitely, I got tired of it because you would have to, like, go through the carrier to switch to eSIM over and it would take like 20 minutes. It's just super annoying and I'm really annoyed that Apple went only eSIM. Let me know if you feel, feel me on that one. Are you kind of on the fence about that? You don't really care about that. If you never switch, then it doesn't matter. But at the same time, I do like that this has SIM card over just eSIM. But if you want eSIM, it has eSIM as well within the settings. Another thing that's better about the Samsung, this is not on my list though, but have the number row right in the keyboard so you don't have to go to the numbers like you do on the iPhone. It's just built right in up at the top right there. So at number 10 is Samsung DeX. I could not do it without mentioning this. And I found a way to make Samsung DeX even sharper. So you don't even need USB cable anymore. You can wirelessly connect. Although I do have to say that when you connect wirelessly, it can be a little choppy compared to a cable because you know, you're going over Bluetooth. So I would recommend using a cable or your HDMI USB-C cable to go ahead and plug that in. Um, but having Samsung DeX has been a game changer for making this a PC style phone. And really it does that. You can use this as a mouse and everything. And then once again, the good lock enhancements, if you go over here, there's some DeX enhancements. I don't know where I put them, but there's some DeX enhancements that have made the uh, resolution sharper on the display. I was able to beam up Samsung DeX in a full 4K. So Samsung DeX is absolutely fire. It's amazing. Now, Apple did bring full display port here with the iPhone, which allows you to beam that iPhone up to any USB-C monitor. And while that is quite useful, it's definitely not um, Samsung DeX level, not even close actually. Samsung DeX literally turns your phone into like a little laptop. You can literally just buy this phone do everything with a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, never have to buy a computer. And just this could be your only computer in your pocket if you want it that way. It can really do mostly everything a tablet can do, for example, when you put it up on Dex. So pretty neat, uh, a pretty neat thing. And if you just have an HDMI cable and you go to a hotel room or something and they got an HDMI monitor, you can use it there as well. So very useful, very practical. And so those were my 10 reasons that the Samsung beats the iPhone. Now there's so many more people are going to get the comments. I could do 50. I could do a hundred. Here's my bonus five that I'm going to include. And there's more again, but I don't want to make this video extra long. It's already quite long. Let's go ahead and start with the first one. That is a bigger, more substantial phone. It feels more ultra. The iPhone feels like their plus line, like the Galaxy S plus line. Um, or you could say the S plus line feels like the iPhone max, but Ultra is bigger than Max. It just feels more substantial and larger than life. That's the first thing I noticed. Like, it's just like when I had this one, I thought it was amazing, and it is. Um, but then when I got the S24 Ultra, I was like, man, they just one up them too. So that's just how it felt when I got this one. Like, oh, this one's bigger. This one's not necessarily better, but it's not better because it's bigger, but it definitely feels more substantial. So that's a bonus one. The next bonus one is navigation choices. So if we go to gestures here, 
on the phone. You have different navigation gestures. You can change how the phone uses. You can use it. You can also put like different. Um, you can put like the buttons down here if you want. So pretty neat overall. I do like it quite a bit uh, in that sense. Also, the back gesture works on both sides of the screen on Android. So you can go here or you can go here, which a lot of people like about the Android phone. The bonus, another bonus one is just the sheer customization. We talked about that a little bit earlier, but um, you can go really deep if you go into the Play Store and you start downloading launchers and icon packs. Let's go over here, icon packs. And while Apple did get a lot more customization abilities, it's nowhere near the depth of Android devices. So that's another bonus one. Another bonus one is the punch hole display is much less obtrusive than the notch. You barely even notice this or take note of this day to day. It feels closer to an all screen phone here for the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Another bonus one is full 200 megapixel size photos for printouts. So if I go over here, I can do a full 200 megapixels. This is a super tech sharp image um, that you can go ahead and print out. And while it does take up a lot of space, if you need to do printouts, this is gonna be an amazing uh, quality for you. Really is, although I leave it at 12 megapixel for the daily, 200 is a pretty amazing. And lastly, the customizable home screen is really often overlooked. Um, we can put the applications basically wherever we want on screen. And with the good lock enhancements, you can actually make the grid size even larger than ever before. So you can do some grid sizing here with Samsung, but you can actually expand that to like five by eight, eight by five. Like you can go crazy with it, with the good lock enhancements. So those are some of my bonus ones for the Samsung. And again, the list can keep going and going and going, but we're going to stop it here. Um, those are my ways that I found the Samsung to be the better experience this year. From a pure hardware perspective, they both feel um, like top level phones and cameras are great and all that jazz. Um, that's what you expect. But that's how I found this phone to be better in my experience so far. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know which one you would take about these two phones, between these two phones. Or if you think this is more competitive with the upcoming 16 models. Um, do you think that's going to be a closer comparison? Let me know down below. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well. And peace.